There are so many ways to get around in Nanaimo. Don't have a car? No problem. In this video, I'll cover all modes of transportation for your move to Nanaimo on Vancouver Island. Hi, I'm Rita, and welcome back to my channel where I cover all things Nanaimo and the surrounding areas for people just like you who might be thinking of making a move. And if this sounds like something you'd want more of, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss a video. Today's topic is something I get a fair bit of questions about, and that's do I need a car in Nanaimo and what is the transit system like? I'm going to be going beyond this and explain a few other methods of transportation you'll want to know about if you plan on living in Nanaimo. So let's start with the first question and that is, do you need a vehicle here? My answer to this question is always, if you can afford one, then yes, I highly recommend a car. This is due to the fact that it provides the ability to travel to other destinations Vancouver Island has to offer more easily. Once you move here, you'll want to explore and you can be in other beautiful destinations in a matter of hours. Like in this video of my trip to Hornby Island. If you're in the city, having a car makes it so you're no more than 20 to 25 minutes from most locations. Nanaimo is a very long city from north to south with two highways that run in this direction so you can get anywhere fairly quickly. Nanaimo is great at providing all sorts of shopping opportunities in any of the segments of the city so if you're comfortable just staying within your neighborhood then biking or transit it is probably fine. By car, according to Google Maps, from central Nanaimo, you're only one hour and 36 minutes away from Victoria. To Tofino, that's two hours and 57 minutes. One hour and 34 minutes to Campbell River. 32 minutes to Parksville. Two hours to Port Renfrew. One hour and 10 minutes to Port Alberni. And only one hour and 14 minutes to the Comox Valley. If you have an electric vehicle, Nanaimo currently has 81 charging stations within the city. And if not, gas prices today in Nanaimo hover around $1.58. Parking in Nanaimo is also very affordable compared to bigger cities and finding parking is usually pretty easy. There are a number of parking apps that make payment and extending your parking hassle-free. And as far as ride sharing is concerned, Nanaimo is lucky enough to have U-Ride which began service last November. You simply download the app, request a pickup, which is very similar to Uber and Lyft in larger cities, and is an excellent alternative to taxis. I recently used this service to get from the Departure Bay Ferry Terminal to the Nanaimo Airport, and the fare was around $45. Now onto bus transit. Nanaimo does have a very thorough bus route network throughout the city, which covers down from Cassidy, where the airport is, as well as the intercity bus route, Route 91, which takes you to Parksville and Qualicum Beach. The three large bus exchanges are located at Woodgrove Center, Country Club Mall, and at Vancouver Island University. On top of the bus transit system in Nanaimo, the city also offers a healthy network of bike lanes. Active transportation is something Nanaimo is working on, as the population is growing and people are looking for more and more affordable methods to get around town. There have been major bike lane improvements along Metro Drive and Bowen Road. However, there has been some resistance with seeing improvements downtown on Front Street, with the major argument being congestion issues for cars. And according to one article in Nanaimo News Now, a lengthy project to include bike lanes on Wake Saya Ave between Bowen Road and Colliery Dam Park is awaiting funding and direction from council. There's also a City of Nanaimo cycling app, which I didn't found to be very useful other than providing a map with some colored routes. Now, besides getting around within the city, what about getting off the island to and from Nanaimo? Most people's immediate plan of action here is BC Ferries. After this video is done, check this one out where I describe my experience using BC Ferries to commute to and from work in West Vancouver for an entire year. As travel to and from Vancouver Island has increased, particularly in the summer months, it's recommended you always reserve a sailing when traveling by car. Otherwise, you'll risk having to wait a sailing or even more. Nanaimo has two large BC Ferry terminals, one in Departure Bay, 
which connects you to Horseshoe Bay in West Vancouver, and the other in Duke Point, which connects you to Tuasin. There's also a 20 minute sailing from the Nanaimo Harbor to Gabriola Island. These smaller ferry services will take you to the smaller islands off the coast of Vancouver Island called the Gulf Islands, like Salt Spring, Denman, and Hornby. And they're well worth exploring. Of course, if you're looking for a direct, fast, and easy way to get from downtown Nanaimo to downtown Vancouver, Nanaimo's new high-speed passenger ferry called Hello Ferries began service this summer. I've taken it twice so far, and it's been super easy, albeit a little bit more expensive than a passenger fare on BC Ferries. A base fare on Hello was $39, whereas a walk-on passenger fare on BC Ferries is around $19. And if you're not into traveling by boat, then one of the smaller seaplanes from Nanaimo Harbor might be your answer. Sea Air offers service from downtown Nanaimo to downtown Vancouver for around $116 when booking online. And Harbor Air, which I found fares online this week for only $79. And located in the same area as Hello Ferries, Helijet offers flights to downtown Vancouver in their twin engine 12 seat helicopter and will get you there in only 18 minutes. And flights this week were as low as $120. $29. And if you really have places to go, the Nanaimo Airport offers service to connect you to international airports through airlines such as Air Canada, WestJet, and Pacific Coastal. I hope this video has answered your questions about how to get around the city of Nanaimo. And if it has, please do me a favor and like this video so that it can help others who might also be in need of this information. And if there is something that you'd like to know that I did not cover in this video, then make sure to leave your question in the comments below, or better yet, get in touch by using my information in the video description. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch and I will see you next time.